My name is Sir link -a -Lock, as I like to link a lot. Linking is a fun and easy way to remember things by trying to find a connection, a link, and it is really good for spelling. Oh my goodness, it is ridiculously good for spelling. It's a joke how good it is for spelling. It's off the charts. But I've invented nothing new. The use of mnemonics has been out there forever. Never eat shredded wheat for North, East, South, West. North, you elephant, squirt water. Um, I ate and I ate till I was sick on the floor. Eight times eight is 64. Big elephants can't always understand small elephants. Spelling a because. Big elephants can't always use small exits. Betty eats cakes and uncle sucks eggs, which is very random, but I love random, as you'll see. Oh, you lucky duck for could, would, and should. Richard York get battle in vain. So these tricks have been out there forever. I've just grabbed it like no one else has, certainly for spelling. Spelling, it is so, so good for spelling. It's so exciting. But the cool thing is with linking, if my tricks don't work, you think you're wrong. Let me know what you've got. And all you need to play is an imagination. No rules, no system, nothing. Right, let me show you around the Salink a lot app, which, oh, which the opening gambit is spelling, punctuation, and grammar. There's gonna be maths on the app in the future, geography, science, history, all subjects. But let me start you off with spelling. Now, there are 375 words the government give primary school children uh, to learn by the time they leave uh, primary school like 40 or 50 in each year group. Uh, there's about 90% on the app with the balance to come fairly soon. Uh, there's also, there's lots of high frequency words that are not on these lists from the government uh, that may well be there one day. There's gonna be about 500 words on this app, but this is for tricky words. There is nothing on the app for phonics. This runs alongside phonics programs. For the red words, they're called the tricky red words, like the word was. The number two, um, of, people spell it O-V, the, uh, he. So this runs alongside phonics programs. There's no clash at all. It complements it. It's filling gaps all the way up to onomatopoeia. So I've called it the app itself. There are levels one to five. I've not called them year one, year two, year three, because uh, outside the UK, it's different terminology. But also when you've got a child who's, uh, let's say a 10 year old child who's not the best speller, who feels pretty bad about spelling, um, they don't feel so cool about clicking on, let's say, year one words. They don't mind when it's level one words. So let's show you around the app. You'll see here level one. Now level one is for, in the UK, it's reception year one and a bit of year two. So that's like four to six year olds. Level two is the sort of five to seven year olds. Year one, year two, and a bit of year three. And it overlaps like that going down to level five. So let's kick off with each bundle's got about 20 words in it. Some have got 20, 25, mainly 20 words. And there's a group, each one's got, a, the bundle name is after a famous literary figure and one of the words in that bundle. For example, Keith Keats. And you can see a sort of little biography about Keats at the bottom there. It's a bit of fun with uh, alliteration. We love alliterations. So talking of key, let's show you the word key itself. Now key, this is a killer word. This is the only one syllable word ending E-Y with an E sound. Monkey is two syllables, um, and they is a different sound. So this, when a child hears this for the first time, they would spell it K double E or C double E, like tree, free, or three. Why would you put a Y? Why put a Y? Why put a Y? Why put a Y? You wouldn't, all right? So, welcome to the world of linking. Key. As you turn a key in a lock, so turn the letter K around the letter E and drop off one of the pointy bits to get the letter Y. I always incorporate the meaning in each animation because what's the point of learning the spelling of a word when you're never going to use it because you don't know what it means. Also for EAL students, this is really good for EAL students because English is a really difficult language. Oh, it's such a difficult language, it's so hard. And this takes the, uh, the words, the letters off the paper and animates them. Um, so it's really powerful for them because, you know, an EAL student may say, I can spell key. I don't know what it means, but I can spell it, which is no good to anybody. Talking of sort of English second language and sort of little barriers to learning, this is tremendous for children who've got a learning block. Oh, it's, it's so exciting. It's knocking down these barriers. For children who've got like, for example, for dyslexia, 
It is so, so good for dyslexia. With 90% of children who feel they can't do it, it's confidence. This instills it within seconds. But what's really cool is children who find learning a bit tricky uh, are really good at thinking of links because rote learning for them doesn't work. People jazz it up by trying, they try and call it look, say, cover, right, check. Yeah? Look, say, cover, right, check, or whatever. It's just rote learning. It just doesn't work for a lot of children. It, does, it takes time. It's not fun. Uh, it doesn't necessarily work and you can't join in. So children who've got a learning block think, well, rote learning is no good for me. They've had to explore their imagination to commit something to memory. And they are really good at thinking of links, which is great. I've got a term for dyslexic children. I call them multilateral. That's my term for them because they've had to go that way to learn something. For a child who hears something once or see it, so they see it once and it goes in, firstly, we hate them. But secondly, they're like linear learners. They haven't necessarily had to go that way to commit something to memory. So children who find learning tricky match their peers. Maybe they could even be better at linking than their peers, which is really exciting. That is the old... I'm very, very happy with that. Very happy with that. Um, but also, when you, um, when you get sort of 8 out of 10... You think, well, thanks to Selink a lot, I can now get a 10 out of 10. Well, that's great, fantastic. But when you get naught out of 10, you think, oh, I've just got 10 out of 10. Well, that is bonkers. I normally get naught or one. I can't believe this. So for these children, it is so, so exciting. It's so, so exciting. And what's really good on the app, if you send me, if a child thinks of a good link, a good trick that works for them, it works. We can't say you're wrong. Some may be a bit random thinking, really? Okay, well, good luck, fair enough to you. But it's a good one. They can let me know either via their parents or via the school. Or you can let me know. Or parents can let me know. Send me your tricks. And if it's a really good one, I think, oh, that's better than mine, actually. In fact, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of mine off the app, put your bit of work up there, get my animators to, to, to bring it to life, and you will get your name on the app under the animation, which is really cool. We all love to see our name in lights. And children who struggle are good at this. I'm going to show you one in, uh, in, in this... Um, in this presentation from a boy, a seven-year-old boy, a really good link, really good. And he's really grabs the link a lot with both hands and the parents can't believe the difference it's made. It's so, so exciting. So for children who struggle, this is tremendous. Oh, it's so good. It's so, so good. It's wonderful. Right, let's go to another bundle. Let's go to Great Grimms uh, and go down to the word buy. B-U-Y. What is this word? I mean, really? Buoy? But, yeah, and there's nothing like it. I mean, there's a guy rope. That's a rare word. This is a bonkers word. That you. I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, you? Oh, come on. So, over to the link. Here we go. Bye. The letter U looks like a shopping bag. When you go shopping, you put the things you buy into your shopping bag. Mustn't forget Grandad's teeth. Mustn't forget Grandad's teeth. Grandad's teeth, very important. Visual stuff, bringing things to life. So, so important, so important. Now, uh, let's take you to another bundle, Patient Potter Level 2. Uh, for the word biscuit, difficult word, tricky. What's that you doing? I mean, come on, biscuit. A child said recently to me, I spell it biscuit, I pronounce it bisquit, so I spell it B-I-S-Q-U-I-T. Bisquit. Well, that's no good. It's not a good enough link. I don't mind sounding out things like Tom or Row for tomorrow or Wednesday. It's okay, but it's not really the way forward. I think getting a child to mispronounce a word to have a spelling, it's not, it's not ideal. You want to try and pronounce the word correctly and help the spelling, really. That's called chunking. It's all right once in a while, I think. Anyway, so, biscuit. But in a second, you're going to see somebody after the spelling of biscuit, and you're going to recognise the voice. So, over to Biscuit. Biscuit. Normally, you dip your biscuit into the cup, but in this case, you dip the cup into the biscuit. The C is the handle and the U is the cup. Biscuit is a French compound word pronounced biscuit. Bis means twice. It's a sibling of the bi in bicycle, which has two wheels. Cuit is the past tense of a French verb meaning to cook. 
So biscuit literally means twice cooked because there were two parts to the process. Firstly, the biscuits were baked and then they were dried in a slow oven. Did you recognise her? Susie Dent from Countdown is on the app. How exciting is that? I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Her character is called Lady Lexicographer. She wants to tell children about words, the origin of words. We've got an interesting story to tell. Etymology is a big deal, certainly for seven to 11 year old children, seven year old and above, and a bit of the younger children as well. But that's really cool, biscuit. Cooked twice, B-I, by bicycle, qui, like cuisine, bringing words to life, which is really, really good. You know, if you said to a child, do you want to know the story of a word you can't spell? What, you're rubbing salt in the wound? Of course I don't, all right? But like, here's the spelling trip of Biscuit from Sir Link a lot. Over now, do you want to hear the origin? Yeah, now I can spell it. You've piqued my interest. Let's hear the story behind the word Biscuit, which is great. You've got to love Susie Dent. We love a Susie story. Lady Lex is a complete tote legend. We love her. Now in the same bundle, we're gonna to go to get down to the bane of your life. Oh, I feel sorry for any teacher, certainly a primary school teacher, the dreaded there and there. There and there. Oh, now they are, is, has been covered in the punctuation and grammar section further down the app, which I'll show you later, all right? For there and there. But the great thing is, I didn't think of this. I was told this 10 years ago by a dyslexic specialist. It's really clever. It's really, really cool. I added the catchy rhyme at the end, but she thought of the really cool bit, the really good bit. This is great. Start to get very excited. Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those. Here we go. There and there. The I is a person. Their possession. The R is a signpost. Their direction. He helps her to get here and there. 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 Your children and even you will start with the old, he helps her to get here and there. But I love that trick by uh, the dyslexic specialist because someone says to me a couple of years ago, well, I remember it's here inside there. Well, here's not phonetic. That's nowhere near phonetic. Here, that's not good enough. Someone else said, I am in their house. I am in their house. I in their. Well, third or fourth letter. Third or fourth. Not good enough. Whereas her one, the I, the R, the, 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 the I then added the old, he helps her to get here and there, which we love. We love that link. Oh, we love that one. It's a great one. Now let's take you to uh, another bunch, bunch, another bundle, uh, pie plath for some reception words. We've got all those tricky reception words covered. There are 45 words the government give children in reception, the four to five year olds, to learn in the UK. Uh, 20 are quite straightforward, 25 are tricky. I've covered the 25 tricky ones. And there are more words to come we've not finished. I'm gonna keep feeding that beast. So let's take you to a couple of small words. The first one I want to take you is to the word C, S W -E, which is quite, it's pretty straightforward to spell, but I'm showing you this one because of the following animation, which is not easy to spell. So, here we go. C. What can you see inside the word C? Can you see the pair of eyes that help you see? If so, well done! Okay, pretty straightforward stuff, but these four words are not straightforward. These are tricky. He, me, she, and we. All the words sound like they've got two E's, like C, but no, they've got one, which they all share. He. Me. She. And we. And I'll be doing the uh, the word B and B double E uh, as a homophone in the homophone section soon, coming up soon. I'll be, I'll be getting that covered as well, of course. Let's take you to another word in this uh, this bundle. The word the. 
The or the. The or the is a funny one, isn't it? The, well, where's the R at the end? Or the, why isn't it double E? Neither of the words has got, you know, the T-H-E, oh, what, what's going to be one of them? T-H-E-R or T-H-E-E? No. I mean, the is an old word, of course. So there's a tricky one. Not an easy word at all. Here we go. The. Here is a very short story for you. The is a three-letter word that has an E at the end and end is a three-letter word that has an E at the beginning. The end. Children can spell end. They know the expression the end. That's using a technique of using stuff you already know. It's like letter linking. I can spell end. I know it's got three letters beginning with E. The has got three letters ending in E. Just seeing Sir Linkalot's trick. So if I put the, V-E, but well, that's two letters, that's no good. If I put the, V-E-R, that's three letters, but the E's not at the end. Therefore, it must be T-H. Okay. The next one, the letter I, or the word I, is pronounced I with no dots. It's not I on its own with a dot. No, it's not. It's a big fat no. Okay. Over to the link. I. When the letter I is inside a word, it has a dot. But when it's on its own, it's a capital I that has no dot. And it's pronounced I, not I. I look like an I, with my head being the dot. And I'm tall and straight. Now I mentioned that uh, children get their, children or adults can get their name on the app. Let's take you to this one here in uh, Broccoli Bronte level four. The word Autumn. Uh, autumn. This is a, a, a nightmare word. It really is. This should be O-R-T-U-M. Autumn. It's really tricky. And this seven-year-old boy thought of this link. And it's better than my link for Autumn. Definitely. He didn't cover the first two letters. I did the first two. It was like an assist in like football or something. But he thought of the, the, the uh, trick to do with the U and the N at the end. Really clever. From a seven-year-old child. Here he is. Here he is is Tom Milner Moore, seven years old, couldn't be happier. He's got his name on the app. He's so, so happy. So let me show you his bit of genius. Autumn. A for an is next to U for umbrella at the start of this word. There is an umbrella at the end of this word that's gonna get blown upside down, ending up in the middle because of the windy autumn weather. How good is that? From a seven-year-old. Ah, oh, really good. Okay, he didn't do the an umbrella, but I did that. But the N is the umbrella. It gets blown up to be a U upside down because of the autumn weather. Really good. Really, really good. Tremendous stuff, Tom. So, so good. Right, let's take you to a ridiculous word here in level five. In my favourite bundle name ever, nothing will top this, Diarrhea Dickens. Come on. It's not one of those. No one of those. Diarrhea Dickens. He's turning in his grave. No, he's, not. he's loving it. Charlie is loving that one. Okay. Um, so this word, when I thought of this trick, by the way, my background is maths. I'm a maths man. Um, I haven't got a teaching background at all. Linking is a challenge. I do the crossword puzzle every day. How can I link 1605 to the gunpowder plot? How can I link Sweden's capital being Stockholm? How can I think of a link? To me, it's a game. All right. So when I spotted this trick for this word, I thought it's a really cool spot, but I think the children aren't gonna get it. It's too much of an ask. Goodness me, am I wrong? I cannot believe children, when I do, um, I do staff demos uh, when a school buys the app, I also do a parent Zoom demo, parent and child demo. And I did one recently about 30 children on this demo. I show the trick for this word. The word, by the way, is maneuver. That maneuver, I mean, really. <laughs> Just a ridiculously hard word to spell. O-E-U in the middle. We've never seen that combination in English because it's a French origin, like O-E-U in like um, earth in French for egg, O-E-U-F. It's quite common in French, but not in English. Nightmare word. So when I showed the children this trick on this Zoom demo, I then said, right, who can spell uh, maneuver? Who thinks I can do it? Think, thinking like 10, 11 year olds put their hands up. They did, but then this boy put his hand up. I said, uh, how old are you? I'm five. What, you can spell maneuver off the back of this trick? Yeah, well, go on then. And he got it right. Oh, I thought this is madness. Then a six-year-old girl put her hand up. Yeah, me as well. Yeah, bring it. Okay, she got it right. Oh, I couldn't believe this. It's, it's incredible what children can do. It is amazing what children can do. 
All they need is confidence. Or they, they've got a blank canvas. They can just soak it up. If you can get their attention, it's, it's, it's incredible. Really, really good. I, I just couldn't believe it. I asked them 20 minutes later to these two children, can you still spell it? Yeah, and they both got it right. It's on the Selinkalot YouTube channel. If you type in uh, Selinkalot Manoeuvre, you'll see that clip. Incredible. So, so good. Anyway, so Manoeuvre. Here is my spelling trick for Manoeuvre. And you may think that's a bit of an ask, which I thought, but no, children get it. It's, 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 it's incredible. It's amazing. It is ridiculous. And then it's Susie's story for it as well. We love Susie's story. Here we go. Manoeuvre. The word man is followed by alternate letters of the words hour and eve. A man tries to manoeuvre down our chimneys quietly on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Manoeuvre, meaning a carefully planned scheme or action, was once all about using our hands. At its heart is the word manus, the Latin for hand, and the French word oeuvre, meaning work. That manus also gave us manual, operated by hand, manacles, handcuffs, manipulate, to handle, manicure, a treatment for your hands and nails, and manuscript, something written by hand. It also gave us manure, dung, which farmers often clear away with a hand-held spade. Pooh! Who knew that manure, the word manure, comes from a hand-held spade? Oh, it's great! You've got to love a Susie story. You've got to love a Susie story. Now, each bundle of words has got a multiple choice challenge. Uh, and in on the results page of the multiple choice challenge, you'll see a gimmick called ALF, A-L-F, which is short for average last five. That's the average scores, the last five times they've taken the test. So um, what you need to do, you say to a child, pick a bundle of words, take a test before the animations, before you see them, so what was your score? Six, right, six, okay. So when your ALF is 15, send me a screenshot or show me and you get some class points. Miss, my ALF is 20, look, my ALF is 20. Check that out, yeah, come on. Which is great, brilliant, even more class points. Now levels two to five bundles have also got two crossword challenges, which are after, immediately after the 20th animation, there are two crossword challenges and then the multiple choice. Now the crossword challenges are good because the multiple choice is a way to ease them in gently because they may guess it and get lucky. It doesn't mean they can spell every letter correctly. Whereas, a, whereas a model, with a crossword, there's no hiding place. You've got to get every letter correct. There's also a clock which starts from zero and goes up, so it doesn't tick down if they want to put themselves on a clock. Um, but this is a really good way of sort of having to, but these crosswords mean nothing until the child has seen the animations. They mean nothing at all. They're clues to each animation. Like for example, here you can see that one there. Okay, that's uh, oh, that's that's maneuver, Father Christmas. Okay, that one there, he, that's entrepreneur. Uh, this one, uh, that's fulfill. Right, so that's a really good challenge. If a, if a child says to you, uh, "Miss, I'm bored now. My alpha's twenty. I'm bored now. I'm bored now." Okay, that's great. Okay, pick a crossword challenge and do one of them in under five minutes. Let's say under five minutes. If you do that, get a, send me a screenshot. You get more class points, and then you're ready to move on to the next bundle which is really, really cool. Now, after the spelling bundles, you'll see the green bundles are homophones with more to come, homophones. Like we showed early on with there and there, that's also in the homophone section. Um, homophones, really difficult, really hard, really, really hard. But let's show you a great example of poor, poor and poor. I've not done P-O-R-E, because to me it's quite a rare word. It's not a high frequency word. So poor, poor and poor. And what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? This is what you do. Poor, poor and poor. Poor has a poor at the end. The two O's of poor are a pair of glasses. And the U of poor is a glass. My dog used a paw to pour himself a drink of water, but failed miserably due to his poor eyesight. 
And that works really well, really well. I, I asked the children in the sort of parent uh, and child demo, poor drink, spell that, poor eyesight, a dog's poor. They may occasionally say P-O-W because they're all O-O-O. I think, well, that's power, isn't it? Oh, yeah, of course, it's an A. And I always pop the A in the animation. Really good. Now, I say homophones. I've put homophones, etc. because this is a good one for uh, affect and effect, which are not homophones, but they're pretty close. Affect and effect. Now, I didn't think of this. I was told this years ago. It's not all about me. It's not the Selenka Lot show. Well, well, it is, but it's not all about me. But you can send me your tricks and get involved. All right? So this is a great one for affect and effect. We love this one. Affect and effect. The verb affect begins with an A, and the noun effect begins with an E. Just remember the word raven. Remember, affect, verb, effect, noun. <coughs> raven. Remember, affect, verb, effect, noun. Someone says a good one. Uh, v for verb, turn up the upside down. A for affect. V for verb, A for affect. It's great. Doesn't matter. One more in this section. Practice and practice. Oh, in the UK, of course, it's practice and practice. The, the noun is a C. The verb is an S. There are quite a few links for this one, uh, but I've, I've gone with this one. I think this is a very powerful one. Practice and practice. The second last letter of the noun practice is a C, and in the verb, it's an S. The noun ice is in the noun, and the verb is is in the verb. Homophones. The next bundles down are golden rules and patterns. A very important part of the curriculum. So, so important. Rules and patterns. Now, you can have like a rule, but you need a catchy way to remember the rule. You can't just say, here's a rule, learn it. Well, I need more than that. Here's a rule, here's a catchy way to remember it. But you've got to also cover the words that break the rule. You can't just say, here's a rule, uh, those five words break the rule. Goodbye, well, that's not good enough. Uh, learn those five. Uh, no, not good enough. You've got to attack those five words as well. So here is a tremendous example of a rule and a couple of catchy things and covering the ones that break the rule. The sound I at the end of a word. For example, my, fly, and try. No high frequency words that finish with an I sound end with an I. They end with a Y. When you hear an I, put a Y. I and Y are never, ever together, as they don't like each other one bit. The only relationship they have is they rhyme. Links for the following Secret 7 that break the rule are elsewhere on the app. See if you can find them. When you hear an I, put a Y. One syllable words. Really good. I and Y never together. So it's not T-I-Y like Thai, no. But the seven words that break that rule are on the app. The animations are there on the app elsewhere. So that's like 15, 20, 25 words for children, sort of five, six-year-olds. Bang. Try, fly, sky, eye, high. Great stuff. Great stuff. Really good stuff. Oh, we love that. Now, the English language, I was saying before, is really hard to, uh, really hard to learn because words don't, there's so many non-phonetic words. It's a nightmare. Here is a tremendous example of how tough, this shows you how difficult spelling is for the English language. So, so hard. Words ending with a shun sound. The English language is well and truly bonkers. The sound S-S-I-O-N makes at the end of the word can be spelt 12 other ways. And here they are. How impossible is spelling? Hello! 85% of these words end T-I-O-N. So if you're not sure what to put, choose this one, as you'll be right. Eight and a half times out of ten. Thirteen! 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 <laughs> it's madness! And also, shun, S-H, it's only fashion and cushion, ashen and freshen. They're only four words, ashen, pale face, freshen. And they're the, so when you, when you hear shun, 85% of the time it's T-I-O-N. What, it's not even an S-H? Oh, 
Come on, Spelling, give us a chance, will you? No. <laughs> but you've got to attack these ones that break the rules. For, like, here's a great example for words ending C-I-A-N, like magician. There's a really something I spotted here, which is really handy. Here we go. We love this one. Words ending C-I-A-N. C-I-A-N are the last four letters in jobs that end with a shun sound. Here are many examples. The C-I-A is inside each word. Therefore, there is a job inside a job. For example, a C-I-A agent is pretending to be an electrician or an optician or a magician. So there's a job inside a job. A person from the CIA is pretending to be an optician. So when you hear a job ending shun, it's always C-I-A-N. If you've never heard of the CIA, they hunt down criminals in action or they try and stop crime in America. For the word special, that's what I've done. Inside the word special is the CIA. The CIA have got special agents who hunt down criminals in action or they try and stop crime in America. There you go. Is it in? You know it is. So, rules and patterns. We love rules and patterns, a big part of the curriculum, and there's more to come on that. There's things like um, words, the word have becoming having, dropping the E of have to become having. The word care becoming careful is F-U-L, not F-U-L-L. Pluralizing words. Words ending T-I-A-L and C-I-A-L. Lots of good chunky stuff there, really, really good stuff. Then we've got the punctuation and grammar section with more to come. Let's show you, uh, oh, the dreaded apostrophe. Why do children put an apostrophe in the plural? For no reason. What's the, what's the deal? What are you doing? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> anyway, let's show you three animations for apostrophes. That's, I've got them all covered up. There's more on the, in this bundle. But let's show you three examples now. Apostrophes in plurals. Never, ever, 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 ever put an apostrophe that looks like a number one in a plural unless it's possessive. For example, the S of balls tells you there is more than one, so get rid of the one. There's more than one, so get rid of the one. There's more than one, so get rid of the one. There. There happy is a shorter version, i.e. a contraction of they are happy. Replace the A for apostrophe with a little arrow that looks like an apostrophe pointing at the subject of the sentence. This also applies to you are happy and we are happy. So, if you're happy, and they're happy, we're happy. The two boys' hats. The two boys' hats is another way of saying the hats of the two boys. Make the apostrophe an arrow, which is now pointing at whose hats they are. If it was one boy, it would be the boy's hat, where the arrow would point at just the boy, not the boys. There you go. And then after this, we've got the uh, punctuation grammar. We've got Susie's stories. So Susie's stories are always below the spelling and the word itself. It's under, um, under uh, uh, the spelling animation. But also, they're all at the bottom. If you want to find them quickly, go straight to Susie's Stories, go that way. And the last bundle you'll see there, we put up recently, is for prefixes, which is another important part of the curriculum. Let's show you three goodies here, some good ones. I know the first one, I knew one of the definitions, but not the second one, didn't know. So here are three great Susie Stories for prefixes. Para. There are two para prefixes. The first, from Greek, means beside. You can find it in parallel, something which runs side by side with another. 
The other is from the Italian parare, to defend against. A parasol protects you from the sun, while a parachute gives you protection from a fall. Peri comes from the Greek peri, meaning around. A perimeter is the border around something, while a periscope on board a submarine allows submariners to look all around. Philo is from the Greek philos, loving. Philosophy is the love of wisdom, while philanthropy is giving and generosity made from a love of mankind. We also use the suffix file, P-H-I-L-E, to mean lover. A francophile loves France, a cenophile loves dogs, and a pluviophile loves a rainy day. So that's the app for now. There's lots more to come, lots more to come. Spelling, punctuation, grammar, homophones, rules and patterns, etymology. Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on, we love it. We love it. Now, at the moment, there's one code for the school, one code, and by the way, this is the browser version, this one, um, what we're showing you around. Well, there is a browser version, so you can use it at a whiteboard in class. It's app, app.salinkalot.org. That is the browser version. And then you, you do that, when you click, when you've done that, you click top right, there's like a log icon, like a piece of wood. That's my little joke for login. You know, it's a great shout, it's a fantastic shout. And then you put the name of your school and then this code. This code gets given to all the parents for free so the children can use it at home. So a child has not got, got their own uh, avatar, their own page, their own passwords. That may well change in a few months time. Um, the plan is to get it to that, to that stage, but at the moment, they haven't. You can still monitor their progress, and I will come by, by picking a bundle, how they get on, what bundle are you on now, how you're getting on, what's your elf, what bundle are you on now, and you'll quite easily monitor what's going on that way, very easily. But they will change, so certainly in a few months time, it'll be there. So, uh, right, this is what you do in class. You need to have, every day, Selinkalot time, it's Selinkalot time. Let's say for five minutes for children, the four-year-old children reception, the four-year-olds, but 10, 15 minutes for, for children, five, six-year-olds, all the way up to up to 14-year-olds. So link a lot of time, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour a day. You find the time, you make it happen, you crowbar it in, because there's a lot of spag here, so I'm sure you, you allot some of your time throughout the week for spag. Put some of this stuff, the spag uh, allocation of time, into this. So you have so link a lot of time every day. You've got to assign a so link a lot monitor. They've got to earn that right through good behavior, good work, good punctuality, whatever it's going to be. You tell the parents. We've hopefully already done the parent Zoom demo, so they're aware of the app and still and what it's all about. Um, so you tell the parents, right, a certain date. Hi, parents. By the way, your parents, they are going to love this. Oh, they're going to love it because there's no supervision at home required. No supervision at all. The child's playing on the app, loving it, learning, gigging away. The parent or, or foster parent leans over the shoulder, gives them, oh, what, what's this? What are you laughing at? What, what's, what's this? What's this? It's a link a lot. Oh, 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 we love this. And I've got some wonderful stories of parents and foster parents bonding with their children. Some great stories of parents and carers breaking down barriers. I've got a wonderful story a year or so back saying to this mother, and the mother said to me, uh, my six-year-old child, I can't, I can't bond with him. I just can't connect. Mother to a call, I just can't connect with him. We're having so much fun with Sir Lincoln. It's knocked down a barrier. We've got a relationship now. We're having fun together, and that is, that's goosebump stuff. That is fantastic. That is what you want. Brilliant, really stuff. So love you for that. But also, parents say to me, this is really good because my child's not the best speller because I suck at spelling. It's great for me. I love this. And also, your other parents are really keen to get the best for their children. They're always saying to the parents in the schools, what can I do? What can I do? How can I help my child? Here's the link And they say, thank you. So your parents are gonna love you for this. So you say, you tell the parents, right, we're working on 
Uh, Key Keats, level one. For your information, parents, we're, work, we're working on Key Keats for the next two or three weeks. For your information, there's nothing for them to do. Then you say, after that, we're now working on Blue Blind. We're now working on Patient Potter. But I keep saying it, there's nothing for them to do. So, Monday morning, you're starting the children on Key Keats. But by the way, for children in reception, or if, this, this, um, if you're watching this overseas, not in the UK, for the four-year-olds, four or five-year-olds, just cherry pick one or two, still have a lot of time, um, cherry pick one or two words from the level one bundles. One or two a day, that's more than enough. That's 20, 30, 40 a month. They'll be on the next level before you know, all right? But for year one, so five-year-olds upwards, I would say you should start them all on key keats. Now, certainly at a primary school up to 11 years old. Uh, I'd say for a secondary school, maybe start them on level two. And you may think, really, level one for some of my children are 11 years old. Uh, but you know there are some children in, uh, who have 10, 11-year-old children who can't spell was, done, and some. You've got to get them covered. So you're, you know, the top-end children may think, really? Level one, how dare you insult me? I cannot believe you're asking me to do level one. It's disgraceful. So look, can you bear with us for a while? Not for long. We want to get the children up to, all up to the same level we go from there. But also the children at the top end will love the animations and get into the whole thing. So the, you've, you've assigned this link a lot monitor. You've got this monitor through good behavior, what it's going to be or good work. They play. What, firstly, what you do is you test the children on all 20 words on key keys. All 20, pen and paper, spreadsheet. That's what you do for now. That will change in a few months time, it'll be a bit easier. But spreadsheet for now, pen and paper. You then get this child to play the first four or five animations. If they're five rolls, maybe three of them. Three, four or five words, play, play them twice. Back to back, the child plays them on the interactive whiteboard. The teacher then walks around the class helping children on an individual basis. Independent learning, you can't beat it. You then say to the children, right, have those four or five gone in? Yes, miss, bring on tomorrow, sitting clock time. Can't wait, they're all in. Others are going to say, I better practice home to make sure, which is fine. You do four or five a day, you finish the bundle. You test them again. Results are going to be through the roof. I promise you they'll be through the roof, which is great. But you say to the children, right, that's really good. You've done really well in the last week or two on key keats. Your ALF scores have really come on. I'm really, really impressed. But I'm going to test you again in three or four weeks' time. I'm going to catch you off guard with key keats. Unannounced, yeah? I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And your scores are going to be lower. All right. Some children will say, miss, all 20 words are in. You can test me anytime you want. Give me an iPad or tablet pen and paper, whatever it's going to be, bring it. You test me anytime you want, they're all in. Others are going to say, hmm, I better practice at home to make sure, which is fine. The results of the third test are the most important. They're so, so important. Have they stuck a month or two later? And you will not believe the results. Most of them stick. They may forget the occasional one, but most of them do stick, which is really, really exciting. But here's something that's really, really exciting too. There are this is now, this uh, tutorial is the start of March in 2021. There are 75 lessons on the Selinkalot YouTube channel with lots more to come. All free, okay, the Selinkalot YouTube channel. And Susie is in quite a few of those. I did, we did 46 of them last, um, in lockdown in uh, 2020, March. We began them last March, 2020. We did 46 lessons. After lesson one, uh, I got a video from a girl called Ellie, eight-year-old Ellie who said, Selinkalot, this is my way of uh, spelling clothes. She had fridge magnet letters, said inside the word clothes, she said a the, he, lot, and cloth. She put it together into a catchy sentence, and I thought, that's really good, that's really, really good. I've got to play that. So lesson two, before I started lesson two, I said, children, before I start, here is Ellie. And there she is. And I gave her, so she got a shout out. I played the video, she got one of those. She won a badge. I gave her a couple of badges. She won a pencil. And children thought, well, I want some of that. I want to, get, I want to win some merchandise. I want to get a shout out. I want to get a shout out. I fancy a bit of that. So children started sending me all their stuff. Brilliant. Either texts by their parents' phones, social media, emails via the school. So I was getting all these shout outs. These shout outs. These shit, 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 shout outs. Which is great fun. Children five years old up to any age. If I once got any, uh, a link from a 70 year old woman, she loved it. She said, I'm sending this because I want to win a badge and I want to get a shout out. I want to get a shout out. I'm 70 years old, but I love it, which is fantastic. It's so, so cool. These lessons, we restarted these lessons in November uh, 20, 2020, 2020. They're now twice a week in the UK time, Tuesdays at 4.30 for levels one and two, which is for four to six year olds, really. So reception year one and year two in the UK. 
And then Thursdays at 4.30 for levels three to five, which is for key stage two and key stage three, which is basically seven-year-olds upwards. These are a great resource to use in class. They're so, so good. Because I go through my eight techniques, words inside words, things that look like letters, like the C of handle, the U of cup, homophones, silent letters, song, rude, lots of poo and bum on the app, by the way, lots of poo and bum on the apps to warn you, okay? Because the children love it. It's a case of knowing the audience. So I go through these techniques. I have a little clock here. A five second clock. I put a word in like children. Before I uh, before I tell you the answer, here's the word instead. Okay, let's the word instead. All right, children. You got five seconds. All right, here's the clock going. Can you see a word inside a word? And we start the clock like this. Can you see it? T. Okay, two parts of linking. Spotting something in a word and then putting it into a catchy sentence in something they already know, like breadcrumb, the B of bread, the B of crumb. You can't hear the B of crumb. Give me a word begin with B that's something to do with crumb. Bread's to link a lot. The B of bread, the B of crumb. You know breadcrumb. So next time you hear crumb, you've got to think breadcrumb. Well, I know breadcrumb. That's going to help me spell crumb. Really short journey to make. Or putting it to a sentence, a catchy sentence, like, you know, cup of tea and a biscuit they know already. But something that's catchy. So here, like instead, you've got the word T in instead. Right now you spotted that, put it into a sentence. What can you think of? Okay, I'm gonna have coffee instead of tea. There you go. So children are joining in and thinking of tricks. It's me getting them into thinking of links and becoming linkers themselves. These are a great resource, fantastic resource. So what you do, um, so Monday morning, key keeps four or five words. Tuesday, pick five or 10 minutes of a lesson. Wednesday, key keeps. Thursday, and away you go, pick a lesson and off you go. Now, lessons one to 46 were for children of all ages from four to 14 year olds because when they're on the sofa during lockdown, uh, I've got to keep them all engaged. So I've got tiny words and big words. Like I've got the word, I don't know, peace, and then onomatopoeia after it. So a child whose peace is six years old, onomatopoeia, what? So the, the first 46 lessons, you've got to pick and choose a bit. Uh, but lessons 47 onwards, 47, 49, 51, the odd numbers 47 onwards are for levels one and two, which is four and five and six year olds. And 48, 50, the even numbers all the way up are for key stage two and key stage three, so the seven to 14 year olds or, so, or adults. There's none of it's gonna be, okay? These are a fantastic resource because children think, oh, I'm gonna get a shout out. And if they send me a good trick, they can get a shout out a lesson a week later. These lessons are gonna go on forever. I've got 75 with loads more to come. Loads more to come, fantastic stuff. But, but also, this is what's really cool, for parents at home, you say to parents, parents have obviously got into Selenclot, they've heard about Selenclot through the Zoom demo. You say to parents, look, use the app and these lessons as a bargaining tool. That's what you do. So the child says, I want a treat. I want a big fat treat. Okay, hold on a second. You've got to earn your treat, all right? Pick a lesson. Okay, what have you learned? Nice, you got yourself a treat. I want to go on FIFA. I want to go on FIFA. I want to go on FIFA. Okay, pick a bundle of words. Test yourself before you see the animations. What was your score? Six. Okay, when your ALF is 15, show me, you can get our FIFA, mate, all right? So, and children are binge watching these lessons because it's me being a bit of a joker, doing that stuff, saying poo, bottom, woofies, wahey, put some clever stuff with it, and they can join in. That is the way of selling out to children. You say, here's a spelling app. Okay, that's interesting. But hold on, look at this guy, this YouTuber, all right? Look at him. Yeah, oh, he's a laugh. I'm more, I, I like him. He's got a spelling app. Yeah, I'm gonna, that's a way of selling it. And for also, for children in the world of YouTube, you know, you said, that there's a YouTuber, you can get on his channel. How do I do that? Think of a trick. Oh, I fancy a bit of that. And you win some merchandise. And if it's a really good link, if it's a really good one, you can get your name in the app. Can I? Yeah, check that out, all right? So, this is a very powerful learning tool. It runs alongside what you've already got, all right? So, for, it's brilliant for phonics. It's filling the gaps of phonics. You may have some spelling programs for older children, but they haven't got these, for the common exception words, there's nothing out there. They've got the occasional one for because and stuff, but there's nothing out there at all for this. This complements what's already out there. And don't feel, oh, it's another resource for our teachers. So yeah, it is another resource, but it's gonna lighten the load. It's gonna lighten the load massively. You're gonna to say to them, spag, spelling, punch, and grammar, sorted, tick. And of course, what's happened with lockdown for the last year or so, I mean, children generally, if you say to a child, read a book at home for pleasure, oh, why would I do that? Why would I do that when I find reading an, an issue? I've got gadgets, mate. I've got gadgets. Why would I do that? And in the last year, it's gone into a tailspin. Children are catching up in no time at all. In minutes. Hours they've caught up to the last year and they're going beyond. It's amazing. And what's really cool is there's no supervision for the teachers. I was talking to a teacher a year or two back. 
um, when I was at a school, I do school presentations, I've done 500 school presentations for 10 years. Um, so maybe when the schools are back open, you can bear me in mind for uh, doing a day of fun with your children for the teacher training. Parents come in, I've got a couple of books. We love all that, definitely. And I was talking to this teacher outside her class, uh, year two teachers, so those six, seven year old children. She went back in and the children were playing the animations and they said, we can now spell field, easy, last. And they got them all right. This is how easy the whole thing is. There's no supervision required for the teachers. I mean, obviously they'd be involved in the whole thing. Of course they are. But it's not as if the teacher's got to learn a system or got to go certain, certain, uh, through a certain routine. Just play the bundles. And before you know it, the children, just their confidence, their confidence is in there within seconds. It's so, so exciting to see. So, so exciting. Right, have you got any questions, any thoughts, ideas? Uh, contact me as the, uh, the email um, and the website. Any suggestions? The whole, thing's, the whole thing's a work in progress. There's, there's more to come. Any ideas, inputs, positive, negative, what you want to do, any suggestions, please let me know. But this is a very, very powerful learning resource. It's so, so powerful. It's never been done before to this extent. This is why it's getting so much attention. There's a massive need for this around the world, of course. English is the world language. English language, of course, is a big, big language around the world. And this is knocking barriers down. And so all the children do, they just watch and soak it up. Getting children's attention is the hardest thing to do. You know that, of course it is. This grabs them. But the great thing is they can join in. And as I said before, all they need to play is an imagination. No rules, no system, nothing. The name of the app is Salinkalot. Is it in? You know it is.